So in this question, we have a tennis ball of 57 grams is moving horizontally when it collides with a stationary piece of clay of mass 500 grams that is suspended from a string. When the ball hits the clay, it remains attached. The ball and clay then rise to a height of 1.04. Okay, first question. Calculate the magnitude, which means the size, of the velocity of the ball and the clay immediately after they collide with each other. Right, now, at a first glance, you might be tempted to want to use the momentum, the conservation of linear momentum formula, the one that goes um, M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. You might be tempted to use that. However, if you're only looking at this part of the question, you'll see that we don't really have enough information. We don't know the velocity of the ball initially. We do know that the clay would be equal to zero because the, the clay wasn't moving. So the clay's initial velocity is zero. And then we don't know what the velocity of the ball and clay will be together afterwards. So we don't know these velocities, although these two are the same. And we also don't know this one. So there's two unknowns in that equation. And so we cannot use that equation. There's, there's too many unknown variables. So what we do instead is the following. We isolate the question um, from pretty much in this area over here. OK, we know that when the ball and the clay have connected with each other, they are going to move from here and they are going to be able to move up to a total height of 1.04 meters. So can you see that they are going to move together along a curved surface? Whenever we talk about um, calculating velocities and things like that on a curved surface, you would know that we use the WNC formula. OK, and when you use the WNC formula, we must remember that WNC is the work of friction, applied forces, or any forces like tension, for example. But if you look at this ball, they said that there is no air resistance. They haven't spoken about friction. There's no applied forces. There's nothing, OK? Um, the tension in the rope and that rope, that doesn't count in this type of question, OK? That's something else. That's an external force. Um, well, it's, yeah, it's not a force that's going to affect the system in that type of way. So there are no. Um, there are no non-conservative forces in this section over here. So for your WNC, you can say zero. You can say zero over there. And then you can say delta EK, which will be a half MVF squared. So it's your final velocity minus your initial velocity plus your potential energy final minus your potential energy initial. And please remember that I'm only talking about in this red box. So this will be your initial condition over here as the clay and the ball hit each other. And then this will be the final condition over here. So if we say zero is equal to, now your final velocity will be zero up over here. Because when you, um, when you rise to a height, um, they should have said the maximum height, but when you reach your maximum height, um, your velocity is zero. So we can say half. Now the mass of the ball and clay, we can just add their, their masses together. So that's going to be 557 grams, which is 0 0.557 kilograms. Final velocity of zero. The initial velocity is the velocity as soon as they have collided with each other. And that 
is the velocity that we are trying to calculate in this question. So that we will keep it as an unknown. Then we've got a final height. of 1.04 and then the original height or the initial height will be zero because that's when the clay and the ball collided with each other and that's on the ground. There we go. And so what's nice is that in this equation, we only have one unknown. Okay. And so I'm going to take that over to the left-hand side of the equation. And then I'm going to type everything else in on the right hand side. And I'm not going to round off just yet. That's going to give me 5,676944. Then the rest is easy. And that gives us a velocity of 4.51 meters per second. And so that is the velocity that the ball and the clay move at exactly, um, exactly after they have collided with each other, 4,51 meters per second. Okay, all right, guys, so I hope that that makes sense. Now, the next question is, it's the same question, but now what they want is to calculate the speed of the tennis ball before it collided with the clay. Ah, okay. Now we can use the conservation of linear momentum because now we have extra information. In the previous question, we calculated what their velocity will be after they collide. So this means we can use the conservation of momentum formula now, which is the M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. And then we'll choose a direction as positive let's say to the right is positive. Great. And so I'm going to use the ball as my mass one. So that'll be zero. So now what you must understand is that we are only looking at the question in this little block. And so this is the initial condition now. Okay. And then the final condition is when the ball and the clay move off, that will be the final condition. Okay. So that would be this part here, when they move at 4.51. And so that's going to be 0, 0.057 multiplied by the initial velocity of the ball, which we don't know. So we can just say VI. And then the original mass of the clay is 0, 0.5 kilograms. And its original velocity is 0 because they told us that it is um, a stationary piece of clay. Then um, we know that you can combine both of these together if you want, because they said that the ball and the clay are going to stick together. So you can combine it together as one mass. So you could say 0, 0,557. And we know what their final velocity is at this point when they collide. That is the velocity that we calculated in the previous question of 4,51. And so now you can go and do your calculation and I'm going to quickly just run through this. Okay. And so what we find is that the original velocity of the tennis ball is 44.07 meters per second.